Civil War Digital Digest. I'm Jeremy and I'm here with Jackie Jacobs with Past Reflections and once again we're honored to have you here with some of your originals from your collection. And today we're going to talk a little bit about a topic that sometimes we forget about in a society where we throw things away rather quickly and that's a repurpose and longevity of clothing or other items during the Civil War era. And we have two dresses from your collection to help us illustrate that point. Um, yes. Jackie, why don't we start with this one, because I believe you said it was a earlier the, example. This dress is from the 1840s, and it's a silk taffeta. It's an iridescent silk taffeta. It has a, what's called a fan front, where these are all stitched down, teeny tiny little pleats all along here. At some point, this dress um, was repurposed as a post-maternity dress, and at that point in time, the lady decided that she needed to put in some gussets underneath the arm here to allow for extra growth in the bust line for when she was nursing. And how do we know that was put in after the dress was made originally? Because it's a different color, it's a different fabric, totally. It is not as exactly a shot silk as this particular dress is made out of. It's a totally different fabric, but it is silk. Do we know about the approximate time frame of this dress? Well, as I mentioned, it's it, this is like from the late 1840s into the early 1850s. Um, if I were doing a matron's uh, presentation, I would have no problems wearing this dress at a Civil War reenactment because of my age. And continuing to, to continuing use it and repurpose it. Because you didn't throw it away. This is a perfectly good silk dress. And the example of that is what they have done on the inside of this dress, which so we can show later if you'd like. Okay, I was just going to say, you talked about there's some other repurposing that went on. Yes, and that was to accommodate when the lady decided that she wanted to use this dress for her post-maternity needs. So we have this dress opened up so we can see some of the alterations for the repurposing and the longevity of the garment. Let us know, what are we seeing here? This is the inside of the bodice. From here to here, it has been sliced open and so that it can allow for the lady to nurse her child. And it still has dried milk right here. It also has the gussets that you can see on both sides that allowed for extra room under the arms. And then once she was done nursing the child, they were carefully stitched up so that she could continue wearing this dress, which is why I said that this dress had a longevity purpose to it. So the dress existed before it existed, she had a child. It existed after she had the child and then after the child was weaned. All right, so Jackie, now we have another example. It's a little bit of a later one. Yes, this is a later period. This was probably late Civil War period and could have been worn right on through to the 1880s. Uh, there was some re repurposing done on this dress um, the buttons were put on more likely at a later time because they're definitely not Civil War period buttons. And these were pur purely ornamental. There's no buttonholes on here at all. And that's why I think these were put on at a later period. Uh, the closeness of the buttonhole or of the button spacing leads me to believe that they may have been put on in the 1880s. So the, the false buttons, that could be a 1860s item, but the way they're spaced is what is saying that yes. it's a later. Okay. Yes, later yes, because uh, even on a, in an 1860s dress, they would put buttons on the front of your dress with a, with a hook and eye closure, but they would be spaced about an inch and a half to two inches apart. Those are definitely closer And these are definitely <laughs> closer together. And they're a two-hole button as opposed to a shank button. It hook, hook and eyes up the front, but it's a two-dart bodice. It drops off the shoulder, which tells me that it is a, you know, 1860s period dress. So the two darts on the shoulder drop are Would, dating it? Dating it to, like, late Civil War and, okay. you know, at that time period. It also has a pelerine, which is a nice ex accessory piece that was used a lot during the Civil War time period. Which looks, like, for me, it looks like a small cape. It is. It's like a little <laughs> cape and it's lined and everything like that. This is a silk and wool twill, and it's an, also an iridescent because one, the warp is blue and the weft is red. 
So that's why it gives it that purple look to it. It also has a nice deep hem lining in it. It has tape at the bottom and the lining for the hem facing is at least 18 inches. So the fact it was somewhere in the late 1860s that style carried yes. through. Carried through probably to the 1880s. Well, thank you Jackie. So we definitely have two nice examples that are showing that longevity. We have the earlier example yes with the repurposing and the, the the alterations for the maternity and then the later example of a great pattern that lasted through time with alterations to keep up with the subtle changes to modify the dress yes <clears throat> uh, they wanted to keep their garments as long as they could and the repurposing of clothing today isn't as prevalent as it was back then and you know, just taking it to a, a thrift store, but actually alterations Altering to, to keep up. Altering a garment so. that you have was a popular thing to do. It's always fascinating to think about the different mindset from then uh, till now. Yes, so. absolutely. Thank you for watching another episode of the Civil War Digital Digest. And thank you, Jackie, for coming out once again. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, share it out to your friends and hit that like button to help us out at the Civil War Digital Digest. Mm -hmm.